Hi there, Simon from simonwood.com. Uh, yes, in a slightly different position today. Uh, the, there's loads of things going on in the rest of the house. We've got all loads of people coming around in about three quarters of an hour. And I thought, uh, well, I might as well taste some wine. And then the remainders of the bottles can be there for the delectation of our guests. Um, five Sauvignons, uh, and then afterwards I'm going to do three Malbecs, so uh, you may see me in this familiar grotty t-shirt later. Uh, but uh, the Sauvignons, where have I got? I've got uh, two South Africans, two Slovenians, and a uh, white Bordeaux, uh, which I think is mostly Sauvignon. Uh, maybe a little bit of Sauvignon in there? I may be completely wrong, it might have loads of Sauvignon in there, but uh, if it hasn't, I will, I'll flush up something. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to find out. It will be easy. You will not have a difficult time. Maybe I'm going to have a difficult time with these five wines. I'd better set into them and shut up, hadn't I? First one. Um, first two of the South Africans, both 2013s, um, and it's Fairview Sauvignon from Darling. Let's give it a whirl. Well, I almost didn't need to put it near my nose. I could, uh, as soon as I twisted the screw cap off, this uh, herby, uh, intense citrus. Uh, yeah, they have they have this uh, uh, their own equivalent of uh, the Garig um, in. Uh, in South Africa, and there's this smell of uh, South African scrubland coming through, coming through here. Finbos is it called? Uh, so it's it's like a, a, a lemongrass tinted terroir uh, gariginess, if that's the word. Um, it smells like it's going to be good, young, fresh, perky, tasty. And that's what it is. Um, and uh, so yes, it feels like a, there's something racing around your throat and going. I'm clean, I'm keen, I'm citrusy. Um, if th there is a little bit of smokiness in there, I'm not sure whereabouts that comes from, um, uh, but uh, I, I get it in uh, quite a few South African Sauvignons, um, and I, I, it's interesting, in the next one I've got, I've, I've, I've found that character in, um, in previous vintages of, of, of that wine. Um, so I like it. Uh, I prefer the Fairview do a, do a terrific Chenin Blanc. I, I prefer the Chenin to this, but this is, this is pretty decent wine. Next. Well, the next one that I was saying about the smokiness, um, it's from the Waterkloof Winery, but it's not Waterkloof um, label. It's uh, Circumstance Sauvignon Blanc, 2013 from Stellenbosch. Let's give this one a whirl. Now, this smells less um, citrus, less sharp, less uh, Jack Russell-like. Sometimes uh, Sauvignon Blanc has that uh, sappy yappiness about it. Here, it feels like it's going to be uh, quite a bit softer and rounder. I don't know whether that's uh, they've done that from Lee's ageing. Uh, it feels like it's going to be a, a fleshier style. Uh, I think it's still going to be fresh and lively, but it um, feels like there's going to be a bit more weight, maybe more gravitas to the wine. Let's try and none of that smokiness comes through when you taste it. What there is, uh, yes, there is some citrus sappiness, um, and there's bits of more, more exotic tropical stuff, and things like uh, uh, maybe a little bit of guava in there, but nectarine as well, pears, uh, and it's that bit where you bite into a fresh pear and it goes a little bit gritty. Good wine. Yeah, good wine, and it feels like there's um, enough weight there to uh, make you think it's, it's, um, it's still got a good year or so, at least ahead of it, and um, what well, would be interesting to see what that's like about two or three years old. Very tasty now though. Uh, right, next one. We are in Slovenia. I've got two from this winery, the Pullis Winery, um, and I'm, I'm imagining that one is oaked and one's unoaked. Uh, and I have to be honest, my Slovenian's not all that uh, hot, so uh, I can't translate what's, what's on the back label, but I'll just dig in. So this is 2012 Dry Sauvignon. Bit of creaminess, but almost like a bit of vanilla. I don't know where that's coming from. Um, and fruit-wise, it's more on the apple side, I'd say, than uh, than citrusy. But uh, it smells like it's going to be good, clean, fresh. If I think about things that it reminds me of, it's very much that um, uh, when I think of the Austrian Sauvignon character, character, which is um, uh, maybe halfway between Bordeaux and New Zealand stroke Loire. So it's got the, a bit of the flesh of Bordeaux, a bit of the yap and sap of uh, New Zealand and the Loire. And that's tasty wine. Um, what's good about it is, yes, it's got the flesh and it's got the fresh. Um, and it's got this, um, uh, oh, golly, the earthy is the wrong word, but it's got, it's got an undercurrent of something that's uh, life beyond fruit. It feels like it's come from a place rather than a factory. Uh, and that's maybe more verging on to that Bordeaux style rather than some of the uh, slightly uh, manufactured, is a bit unfair to New Zealand, but uh, it feels this distaste of a place. Um, so there's a juiciness and uh, yes, these quite exotic characters in there, rhubarb as well, plum, Victoria plum, I don't know uh, quite where that's coming from, but there's this, uh, this fresh plumminess, not sweet dark plums, but um, uh, yeah, this green gaugey plum. I like that. Let's see whether I like, 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 
wine number four. Uh, well, so we are in uh, Grave here in Bordeaux. This is Clos Floridine Grand Vin de Grave uh, by Denis Bo Du Bourdieu. Uh, and I th I'm pretty sure that there's a hefty whack of Sauvignon in here, but uh, I'm fully prepared to be proved wrong. Anyway, let's try it. Yeah, quite a different kettle of fish here. Uh, classic, for me, white Bordeaux uh, aromas. Tinned pears, and I don't know what, quite where that tinned pear character comes from, and I don't, can't remember the last time I actually had a tinned pear, but uh, there is that, uh, yeah, that, that uh, uh, juicy sappiness of tinned pear. So it's, it's got some of that sweet sugar syrup um, flesh, but uh, it, it, it's n not sweet in any uh, by any sense. It's just that it smells like sweet pears. Does that make sense? Better taste it, haven't I? And the smokiness of the oak kicks in, particularly when you taste it. Um, and there's this un under un undercurrent of sappiness. So I was saying about the pears, when you taste it, that's when the green gauge and things like that kick in. Um, feels like a good wine for now, but it's going to be an even better wine in a couple of years, I think. Um, uh, and I'm not, if it's 2012, it won't have been out of the oak for all that long. Uh, we are 30th of December here, 2013. So, uh, uh, yes, it's got quite a, quite a lot of uh, life ahead of it, and uh, I like to see that about the age, three or four years old, and, uh, uh, but, as I say, tasty now. We like, uh, let's see if we, we like wine number five. So, back with the Pullis Winery. Uh, this is uh, Sauvignon 2011, uh, Letnik. Now, I don't know what, uh, G Pullis, I don't know, blah, 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 belongs to the family of uh, Ptudj wines, where the fingerprint of nature is very clearly felt, and etc., etc., and rich flavour seeks out the G sensory points of every wine lover. So wine to hit your G spot, in other words. Uh, let's see whether it hits my personal G spot. Now it feels like there's some late harvest fruit in here because you're getting, as well as the regular citrusy apple Sauvignon, you're getting so much b broader shouldered. Um, yes, a little, less of the sappy, uh, yappy Jack Russell type of dog. And uh, yes, something that's got a little bit more, um, yeah, lurcher or something like that. Something that's got weight and presence, uh, but it's still, it's still got a little bit of sleekness to it. I haven't tasted it yet, I'm still sniffing it, because you, you, more and more things are coming out. You're getting these uh, quite exotic um, things like elderflower, um, maybe a little bit of, uh, I mentioned rhubarb before and plum, I'm getting a little bit of those coming through as well. And it feels to be more and more richness coming out with each, actually let's have a look at each, each sniff, let's have a look at the alcohol, 14%, so yes, it's a... Uh, I uh, wonder whether there's some uh, ever so slightly either botrytized or shriveled up grapes in there just to give it a little bit more uh, weight and presence. Good rounded, rich, honeyed style and then finishes dry. Uh, some Sauvignons are sit there and uh, sit with seafood. That's a lot of essays that, isn't it? Sit there and sip with seafood. Uh, this is much more weighty, creamy, bring me garlicky monkfish with a little bit of cream in the sauce. Um, and um, very tasty. Uh, it's interesting, they have quite different styles from all of these wines, and I think all of them have got personality, and uh, uh, there are occasions on which I would like to drink each of them. Uh, Favourites? Well, it really is like um, comparing beef and lamb, and I mean, they, sometimes you want one, sometimes you want the other. I like them all. Uh, it's the 30th of December, so maybe I'd be veering more towards that, that style, that last Pullis wine, for uh, something to have a glass of when this is finished. And uh, But uh, all tasty. Hope you enjoyed them too. See you soon.